Hey guys, Sableye here, and welcome back to the channel. Today we've got a match analysis versus Mustio. This was a match for the Ultra Cup of a of the Desafio Latam Team League, the VCL. So just gonna jump straight into things, guys. This is a very straightforward matchup from my end, but at the same time, it's not. It's one of those ones where, like. How do I put this? It's it's still like it's very straightforward because it's a position-based game, and when you take position-based games, I feel very comfortable in them. But it's one of those ones where there's still a lot of things on my opponent's end that can make this interesting. Obviously, I have to worry about Spore. Obviously, I have to worry about Finny on their end as well. Not that Finny's too big of a concern, but if they start heal pulsing their Palkia, it does get a little bit rough in the long run. And I cannot simply just go for things like terrain because they can always switch the terrain. I don't really want Rillaboom, but if Finny becomes a problem, I'm going to need Rillaboom. But I do think it's best if we jump straight into things here. So we've got Palkia and Moongus from their end, which is the exact lead I was expecting on my end. And I go with, like I said, my standard game plan, Grim Snarl, Kai Ogre. So from this perspective, it's how early in the set do I want to reveal that I have Max Lightning? Right, and in my opinion, right now, this is Spore Trick Group for my opponent. I don't have a reason to reveal Lightning right now, or Thunder, or anything along those lines. Right? I have zero reason to. Right? I'm, you, as you see, I'm hovering, I'm like, what do I go for, right? But I, I don't think I have a reason to right now. Let them go ahead and click Spore. Yeah, I take a turn of sleep, but they burning a turn just by getting positioning, right? With the light screen up, Pelkia doesn't kill anything next turn. And yeah, they're going to spore again, but I don't overly care. Right? Because, okay, like, like I said, I think they spore Kyogre here, right? If they spore Grimmsnarl, it gets a little rough because I don't get free, uh, free reflect. But like I said, I do think they're more concerned about the Kyogre running through their team. So uh, they do spore the Kyogre. Kyogre, of course, is asleep, but it's fine. And we're going to get a nice little... Uh, Nice little chill right here. So, yeah, we burn a turn of sleep, and I think I click Reflect, which is, I think, a mistake. I should be clicking Foul Play to burn a turn of the sleep that they're obviously going to go for first. But Reflect here is more so if they hard switch into Calyrex, hey, I've got my Reflect up, and Calyrex isn't really doing all that much damage for me here, or for them here, because I got my Reflect up. I have Instant in the back. So with Reflect and an Instant and an Intimidate, Calyrex does nothing here, right? Yo, but imagine if I would have clicked Foul Play this turn. <laughs> but like I said, Reflect does cover that, that option of this, which is absolutely beautiful on my end. Excuse me, and I have zero, zero, zero complaints about what's going on right now. Yeah, I'm gonna put, I'm getting put to sleep, right? There's no secret there, right? But it's one of those ones where as long as I can hinder them from doing a bunch of damage while I am asleep and while they are in Trick Room, this game feels super safe. I don't think it's optimal. Don't get me wrong. This is not an optimal game plan for me right now, right? Like just being here under Trick Room with both my mods asleep is not optimal. But I don't hate the outcome here, in my opinion, right? It's just one of those ones where Amoongus is going to spore because it might as well keep putting pressure on if I try to switch in Incinera somewhere. I didn't want to risk that, not going to bother. This one, I, this turn I'm a little concerned about the Glacial Land. Like, I don't know if I agree with that play per se. Like, what do I have in the back, right? If you look at my team, it should be Incineroar and Zacian, right? So in my opinion, Glacial Lance was kind of incorrect from my opponent's end. But at the end of the day, I do think this is still pretty comfortable. Obviously, I am relying a little bit on waking up, which I don't love. But I'm also kind of conditioning my opponent to not realize that I have Max Lightning for a future game. Right now, obviously, is it worth it if I lose this first game? Probably not, right? So it's just I didn't want to Dynamax early turn one. Right? Like, I very well could have just Dynamaxed and gone Max Lightning and been perfectly fine, right? But obviously didn't have it there. Glacial Lance is going to come out again, which is just fine. And now the question is, do I wake up? Right? Because like I said, eventually I am going to wake up. And as you see, that's where it happens right here. We get our Foul Play and our Water Spout off. Take out the Calyrex right now. And like I said, eventually I was going to wake up. And this is where I my Pokemon decided to wake up. So... With Calyrex out of the question, being almost out of the trick room, having neither of my two mods put to sleep, this is absolutely a phenomenal spot now. And this is why I was okay going for that, right? Yes, I got a little lucky on the sleep turns, but once again, they weren't really putting on pressure. They were stalling out their own trick room. Eventually, I was going to get through it, right? And here's where I have to make a call of who they're going to put to sleep. 
So what I'm gonna do is I am going to, I believe, Thunder Wave my own Kyogre in this matchup. It is super risky. But it also allows me to just get damage off with Kyogre onto their Amoongus before anything dumb happens here. They have to max their Palkia, and if I max Kyogre, it's not dying anyways. So we go for the Geyser, and I make sure that I don't get put to sleep so that my max isn't completely burned. Yeah, I, I, I probably deserve to get fully paralyzed at one or two turns here. But the thing is, getting fully paralyzed isn't as bad as getting Kyogre put to sleep. Because Kyogre still wins this endgame because it just won't die. As long as I Dynamax. So if I get paralyzed one or two turns, it's fine. The only way this really backfires on me is if I get paralyzed like three, four turns down the road, then it starts hurting, right? But right now, being paralyzed on Kyogre, not a huge issue. One bit. Not a huge issue one bit. So we're going to go, like I said, go for that Thunder Wave. Amoongus obviously going to go for the Spore. If they Spore the Grim Snarl, it's a really, really good play. Because it does put me in a little bit of a concerning spot on the future turn. But they do actually go for that Spore into the Kyogre. So the self Thunder Wave going to pay off. Max guys are going to come out, go straight into that Amoongus. And uh, unfortunately, this is the Amoongus that doesn't die. Um, this is the Amoongus that doesn't die. So the Amoongus is going to survive right there, which is a little unfortunate. And makes this game a little bit more rough because like... In my opinion, I killed that Amoongus there. You know it's more than likely going to be Infin in the back, the way they played this game. So I was super safe, right? I, I had to kill onto the Amoongus. Instant would have come in. Kyogre would have picked that off. It would have been a very very nice 4v1 in the end game. Instead, with that Amoongus surviving, this gets a little bit shaky now. Especially because they're capable of doing this. So Instant's going to come onto field, and I believe Trick Room ends up going back up as well, which is super unfortunate here. But, like I said, I just get some damage up. And here I was going to go for, like I said, the max light. Well, I hadn't said it, but like you saw, the max lightning into Palkia. And this was one of those ones, do I want to reveal it? And I'm actually super happy that I got paralyzed there. Because now I can say, you know what? I don't actually have to reveal it because they brought Instant on the field. So Geyser into Instant becomes my better play. So I no longer have to reveal the fact that I have lightning. Right? I go for the Thunder Wave into Palkia just to maybe help me down, down to stretch in the long run. You never know. Instant probably wants the parting shot here, but on the off chance that they don't do something like that, well then we're going to kill the Instant. And they have Trick Room up. Kyogre is actually slower than this Instant right now too. So the para helps in more ways than one. But they are taking their time. It's a tough turn, right? It's, it's one of those ones where they need to find a way to take advantage of the Trick Room turns, and I haven't given them that, right? So Thunder Wave is going to go off, just hinder them off a little bit. Let the Palkia move first. It's fine. I don't really care. I actually believe I ended up figuring out that the Palkia is worth the Palkia and the Kyogre actually speed tie, which I think makes things super interesting down the stretch here. Because nothing's guaranteed at that point anymore, right? Like, if I'm in Trick Room, it's scary. If I'm out of Trick Room, it's scary, right? Because you never know if you're going first or second. And that makes it really, really difficult in this matchup. But right now, we're fine. We do see that Palkia go for the Hydro Pump and is going to take out my Grim. And now the question is, I just got to get out of Trick Room. Right, I should be bringing in, I believe, Zashian first. Zashian should force the hand. I should be protecting, sacking the Insane, and then bringing Zashian back in for a protect stall at the room. That should be the way I play this endgame. Let's see if I actually go about it and do it. But, uh, like I said, having Kyogre not being able to be put to sleep right here is absolutely phenomenal. This is just absolutely phenomenal. There's nothing, right, because I can safely protect Zashian. There's no read I need to make. Right, yeah, it's a little unfortunate that I'm potentially going to get fully paralyzed here, but there's zero read I have to make. I'm going to go for the Hyper Beam, go for the kill. And uh, like I said, the Protect is just the correct play. No reason to sack the Instant yet. I'll sack it next turn. Like, they can go Spatial Ren, Giga Drain even if they wanted to. I'm not concerned because it's not killing my Kyogre. AV Kyogre in this endgame is so good. That it just doesn't die, right? And that's why I was reluctant to max early. Because if I max early, and I don't get any any mileage from it, and they still have four Pokemon, Kyogre's good. AV Kyogre can tank hits, but it can't tank hits from four Pokemon, right? That's why I wanted to make sure when I maxed, I was actually taking KOs. And I did get the one on the Instant. Amoongus is actually going to protect, which I thought was questionable in my opinion. I feel like they had a free Spore into my Zacian, but... Obviously, they are correct there because they did get, they're they probably just covering, making sure they survive into my Amoongus or into my Zacian next turn. Guarantee that they get a Spore. I respect the Wormwind a lot right there. Like I said, I could have hard switched into in, in this turn, and I would have arguably been in a way better of a position. But 
nothing you can do there. And now I have to do the same thing. They actually stall out light screen successfully as well. So maybe I should have attacked, arguably speaking, with the Zacian, but I don't know. I feel like if I attack with Zacian there and I get put to sleep, I'm actively tossing the game in the garbage, you know? Because right now, Zacian, I still have the ability to get out of Trick Room before Zacian gets hit here, right? So to me, it just felt like I need to preserve this Zacian. So there was really no reason for me to get aggressive and attack right there. And here comes the Hyper Beam. <laughs> here comes the Hyper Beam. This should be Spore into the Zacian slot because the Moogus really has nothing better to go for. They don't need to preserve their Palkia. They don't need to try and keep it alive with a Rage Powder so they can just go for the Spore. Personally, I think this needed to be another Wormwind into Kyogre and try to take a KO. I don't think it was picking up the KO, but thankfully they do go into the instant and take out the instant right here, which I'm more than okay with. And uh, Kyogre is just going to click Hyper Beam. Hyper Beam into the Gus, and Gus goes down. And now it's simply Protect Zacian on the last turn of their Dynamax, on the last turn of Trick Room. And uh, Zashin comes out of Trick Room and outstalls this game with Substitute. There's always a chance that this Palkia gets paralyzed as well thanks to the earlier paralysis that I put on it. So eventually I'm going to either get a sub Hydro Pump Miss or a sub par Paralysis and I'm going to keep my sub. Right? They're also not really hindered by Kyogre right now. Right? Obviously Zashin has to protect here while Kyogre burns its turn of Hyper Beam. I also have the ability to Sacred Sword Hyper Beam and just kill this Palkia once we're outside of Trick Room. So. I don't even need I don't even necessarily need the sub right now. I do think they should worm win Kyogre though, but like I said, Kyogre doesn't die, right? Or at least Kyogre shouldn't die. And they do go for the geyser and get it incorrect here. But I think they realize that, right? I think they realize Kyogre probably isn't dying there and just figured, okay, let's punish them for not protecting Zashin and take the Kyogre. And then, granted, if I give them that, they win the game, so... Granted, they're right. If I give them that, they win. So I think what I did here was I think I clicked Hyper Beam because I didn't want to reveal Thunder, and Hyper Beam was doing the same amount of damage anyways. If not even... Uh, did I actually click Thunder again? See, I don't agree with that on my end here. Ryan, go back. Change that. No, you need to hide Thunder. <laughs> I need to hide Thunder. At this point in the game, Thunder isn't worth it for me right now. Sacred Sword comes out. I actually do get fully paralyzed again, so that's twice now I would have been going for Thunder to reveal Thunder and I get paralyzed, but I, clicking Thunder there would have been wrong on my end anyways. That would have been super incorrect for my end, there was no reason for me to click it there, that was just the wrong play. Right, at this point in the game, Hyper Beam does more than enough damage, there's no reason to, to show the Thunder because game 2 I have a very nice, you know, Max Lightning into in the Palkia turn 1, they're going to click Spore and I'm gaming, right? Like, I have that very nicely set for game two. Uh, opposing Kalkia, there's the paralysis. I don't know if that one mattered. Chances are it's a earth power into Zacian. Zacian goes down. Hyper Beam picks up Kalkia. Or they go Spatial Rend into Ogre. Ogre goes down with a crit. And then Sacred Sword picks up Kalkia. So I think either way, at that point in the game, we were fine to win that game. I don't think that paralysis really mattered. But uh, yeah, so we're going to get the full uh, game one there. I am going to skip a little bit in the video just to get us into game two. Because like, like I said, game two, I, I go with the same game plan, right? This is the game plan unless something miraculous happens. There's nothing really crazy. I have to just, it's, it's all about how I play these four mons more so than which four mons I'm bringing, right? This is generally going to be my lead. I can make a case for Zashi and Kyogre, but I mean, this is just consistent, right? It's one of those ones where it's consistent. And now it's a question of... Do I reveal Max Lightning and just take game two? And I figured, you know what, with the correct sleep turns, I can do the exact same thing again. So I'm gonna go for it, again. I figured there's still no reason to reveal Lightning. If I can just win this without having to reveal Lightning, I'm good. I personally, looking back on the set, this is wrong, right? I got out of game one not revealing Max Lightning. This is where I should be going for it, right? I should be taking a game here. Right now, I'm playing. To st I'm playing as if I'm still conditioning for game the future games. But like, why not just win the set? You know what I'm saying? Like, I should be taking the set right here. I should be going for Max Lightning. This is incorrect on my end. But either way, we're gonna go for the Water Spell. We are gonna get Sport into Grim Snell this time. Like I was saying, that is a good adjustment for my opponent. Like th that's their better play, right? Because now Grim Snarl is asleep. Pelkey gets the Trick Room up, and Grim can't get Reflect up. And that's where this game becomes concerning. 
So Kyogre once again just gonna launch a water spell, burn a turn of sleep right now, and if I get the option to wake up here, which I don't because it's guaranteed turn of sleep, I'll click foul play just for the sake of it because you know Calyrex is coming in in that slot. There is no secret right there. Now, knowing that, could I have hard switched an instant here? Perhaps, but I don't get the Intimidate off anyways because the Palkia switches out before my Grimstar, after my Grimstar, sorry. So there's the Spore, Kyogre's gonna take a nap, and Grim is obviously gonna burn its first turn of sleep. So, this is a position that I didn't want to be in, and this is what they wanted to be in in the game one, right? So, obviously, like I said, I should have gone for the Lightning. In fact, I think leading Zashi and Ogre in this game too would have been a lot better because I would have conditioned them, right? Like, I would have been able to click Substitute and Max Lightning, and I would have been absolutely perfectly fine and there was nothing they could have done, right? It would have been a more aggressive game two as opposed to a more defensive game one, as opposed to a more defensive game two, and I think that was the point where I needed to take it, right? I do believe that that was the point where I needed to make that aggressive play. Either way, we're just going to see another Glitch Alliance. I'm still surprised. I feel like in that spot, that's the spot they want to Dynamax there. Like, I, I feel like they're still misplaying with this Calyrex, right? I feel like they messed up a little bit in game one. We do get another Water Spout right now. That's for some big time damage, right? Like, they just took so much damage for no reason that I don't I don't get it, right? Like, I feel like they should be max clicking there and just making this Cali unkillable, at least in my opinion. I mean, I do still have the Zacian that they have to be wary of, but I don't think it's enough to really change anything. So I'll go for the Opulse, and I will attempt once again the Self Thunder Wave, because once again, there's really no reason for me not to go for it. If I get it off, we're gaming. If I don't get it off, oh well, I go back to sleep. Unfortunately, not so lucky with the sleep turns in this game. Amoongus is going to uh, put, be able to put my character back to sleep because I didn't get the self thunder wave. And uh, yeah, this is uh, basically where this game takes a turn. Because Glacial Lance now comes out. Does just miss the knockout. Does it kill Grim? I think it yeah, kills Grim, right? And I think because it kills Grim, I take it out. <clears throat> So the Glacial Lance does manage to come out, does manage to pick off the Grim style, and Calyrex now gets the Grim Nay Boost, and this is what they wanted, right? This is the position where Calyrex wants to be. They're in Trick Room. I have to kind of go instant here. I have to bring them back down to neutral. There is nothing better for me to go for here. Still don't know the item on this Calyrex as well. I still have to scout for White Herb or Babiri Berry. It died very easily last time, so let's see what we get here. I believe it was... Well, we're not going to see White Herb either, if, if, even if it is, so... And this is a question of who do they max and where do they max it. They have to max Calyrex here in my opinion. Like they're still neutral with the Cali, right? So we'll go for the Old Pulse, burn another turn of sleep. And I believe the correct play is just burning Jealousy from my end. Or fake out into Amoongus. Either of those two is safe. Uh, fake out into Amoongus prevents me from falling asleep. As you can see I was hovering back and forth. Uh, they should protect Amoongus here. Which is why you go burning Jealousy to cover for that. But it's perfectly fine. It's not the end of the world right now. But as you can see, I am losing momentum very, very fast here. Right, the, the, the game plan here is preserve your pieces until you're out of Trick Room, and then just not push that Trick Room back up. Right, that's the general game plan in this matchup. And they're going to max Cali. They've done a good job of getting, taking advantage here, but I've also given them that, right? I've also given them that ability. So Amoongus comes out, and Max Quake comes out. Instant is not going to die here, I don't believe, because I'm super bulky, but... Instant should tank is very, very easily thanks to the fact that they're still neutral. And because instant tank stat, perhaps going for something like Burning Jealousy may have been better there because I could have got the burn on the Calyrex. Would it have mattered in the long run? I mean, I would have been spored, right? So probably doesn't matter. Uh, this is a free Quake for them here. I believe they also have to Rage Powder. So what I go for, I believe I click Origin Pulse Flare Blitz and try to kill the Calyrex. So I don't think I should be maxing. Did I actually Geyser? I think Geyser is incorrect. I think Hyper Beam kills. I do believe Hyper Beam kills Amoongus here. That I think is a misplay on mine because Hyper Beam should kill Amoongus. And then I can simply go Flare Blitz and do some massive damage. Even if I don't want a Hyper Beam and I want a Max Strike instead, also think that's a fair turn. Because it's the same damage output as Strike, and I think it's going to do more. Because, like, a resisted attack here isn't going to kill. I do believe that... Uh, I do believe Strike was a better option here. But let me... Like, let me see. I'm trying to run this calc in my head. Because, like, they're both 150 base power. One is Stab and Resisted, and one is just Neutral. But I think because it's Resisted, I feel like the Neutral hit does more. Anyways, they're going to Protect here. Um, which is just raw... Which is... 
arguably correct because it keeps them alive, right? So Amoongus is going to survive there. What did I do with Instant? I doubled the Amoongus, didn't I? Uh, I don't hate that play. I don't have a better play. My better play would have been to click Strike because then I would have been able to click Flare Blitz into the Calyrex. Right? And being able to click Flare Blitz into the Calyrex there might have been able to pick up the knockout. I doubt it. But it would have been super close. The other option, honestly, would have been to Parting Shot with Instant off the Calyrex. Bring in Zacian now and then still be in a decent spot. But regardless of this, we're still not in a bad spot. They still do not have Trick Room up right now. And the question basically becomes, does Geyser kill? Right, Zacian's coming on in here for the last turn of Trick Room. And I believe I Geyser and Sub. Because this is under, not the last turn of Trick Room, the last turn of Banamax, right? So I Geyser Sub, Bill Quake again. Once again, I should be clicking Strike. I have zero reason not to be clicking Strike right here. Now we're in the range, so arguably it's the better play. But I think the first time Strike would have done a little bit more damage, and it might matter. But now that we're in the rain, I believe rain, uh, Geyser is the correct play. So we're going to Geyser into the Amoongus here, hopefully for the knockout. And I just sub. So Amoongus has to kind of Rage Powder. They have to keep the Calyrex alive, and we know that. There's a Rage Powder. And I'm subbing because I feel like they're going to take this opportunity to just drop a Quake and get rid of Zacian, which makes the most sense. I never revealed it in game one. They don't know I have it. So free sub for me. And the big old Max guys are into this Amoongus. Hopefully takes it down. If Amoongus goes down, I win the game with GG. And of course, like I said before, this is the Amoongus that does not die. And Amoongus is going to survive thanks to those Max Quakes from earlier. And this Quake is going to go into my Zacian. So still not a terrible spot. Still not a terrible spot. Now the question becomes... The question now becomes, does Geyser kill Calyrex? Or do I not want to risk it and potentially just sub again? Because I can make that play too, right? I can get rid of Amoongus here with Ogre and sub again because you know they're going to click Trick Room. And then I have a Zashian behind sub in Trick Room, which I think is probably arguably optimal here. And I think that's what I ended up going for as well. Because you know they're Rage Powder Trick Rooming and there's no reason for me to not be behind a sub. Right, this is a free substitute. Um, I feel like though I should be hitting Calyrex anyways because they have to Rage Powder, right? I've forced them to Rage Powder, so I might as well hit the Cali here. Uh, that is a bit, little bit of a misplay there, but they Rage Powder anyway, so it doesn't really bother me. They have to, right? They absolutely have to. It is a must. Uh, now I click Sub, but the problem here is they still have Instant, they still have Fake Out Pressure, they still have Palkin in the back. I've done nothing, right? I haven't taken a piece, and this is what I was talking about with maxing my Kyogre early is that if I did this early with Kyogre maxed and don't take a piece, we end up in a very similar position, right? Where I haven't really taken a piece, they're getting Trick Room back up and I'm struggling, which is why I was a little reluctant in this game too to go for the Lightning, as well as in the game one, but I think it's, at some point I'm going to need to go for it, right? So this whole game too is just bad on my end, like bad from the get-go, right? I should have ad ad adapted, gotten a little bit more aggressive, gone for the Max Lightning turn one, and now it's one of those things where I can still maybe pull this back. It's a question of do I want to protect Zacian here? And arguably I should have, but I also think I don't think I should. So I think this has to be an origin pulse. I still don't want to reveal Thunder because this is a losing position for me. Right? Now at this point I can now at this point I can start saying, okay, now I can hide Thunder, right? Because at this point Thunder doesn't win me this game, so there's no point in clicking it. They're gonna go for the Glacial Lance right now, obviously not gonna take a KO. But unfortunately, I do believe it does break the sub on Zashian, and I do believe because of that, they take the W. Zashian's sub is going to go down, and I do believe this takes out Zashian with a Hydro Pump. Uh, Zashian's not surviving this with the light screen over. Like I said, I could have protected Zashian there and gone for an Origin Pulse. Does it help me? Not really, because we're in the exact same spot the following turn. Right? So... At that point, it was my fault. I didn't take enough damage. I let them get Trick Room back up. I never really dealt with the Amoongus. And uh, as you can see, you guys can see the result. This game's over. 10 HP Kyogre can't win this. I'm going to play it out just because Palkia doesn't really have an 100% accurate move. It might not have Earth Power. If it's Flamethrower, it's not going to be able to pick up this Kyogre in the rain plus the AV. Calyrex should just Glacial Lance and win, but... There you go, there's the Glacial Lance for the win. I am once again going to uh, jump ahead in the video here, guys. Once again, no real reason to watch Kyogre die. Get to game uh, three. 
right, we'll go we'll, we'll go here like I said at this point I have to go all in now I've got to go max lightning turn one I still lead grim snarl because it's just gonna allow me to get screens up and getting screens up is what's more important in this game especially because I have to play a little bit more of my comfort side right game two I had the opportunity to get aggressive with Ashley and Kyogre with max lightning stuff but now if I lead it I feel like it's easier to call Whereas if I lead it in game 2, it might just be an adaptation just to count one of the words. Whereas here, I feel like if I lead Zashin, it's very obvious that I have lightning. So I'm going to stick with the same thing, just the bluff that say, hey, look, I don't have it still. Right, so we're going to get the bluff of the lightning here, and if they give it to me, they give it to me. Right, they should be clicking Spore again. There's really zero reason for them not to. I haven't shown lightning yet, and this is where I have to go with it. There's literally nothing else to do. I click lightning, and I click light screen, and I just stay in the game they're gonna click uh i believe they end up clicking sport trick room which is exactly what i want here but i have to be smart and i have to be able to make sure i'm actually doing a either a doing damage or b not losing my i'm either taking knockouts or i'm not taking damage that has to be the case here because right now i'm in a lot of trouble if they eventually just stall out this dynamax and dynamax late but light screen goes up for step one and we're gonna drop the big old max lightning. Like I said, it doesn't do damage, right? And now I've conditioned, well not conditioned, but like I've put them in a spot where yeah, they probably have pollen puff and yeah, they're gonna probably heal up this uh, Palkia. So let's get uh, let's get rid of things here. I could foul play, right? I think you're gonna see me hover over foul play to try and catch a switch in for the Amoongus slot. But I didn't think it was worth it. I don't believe that's what I went for. Actually, I might have foul played anyways, to be completely honest. Did I do it? Yeah, I went straight into the Amoogus. That's fine. Right? If I catch the Calyrex switching in there because Amoogus feels useless and doesn't switch out, right? Then, okay, it is what it is. But Pollen Puff is fine here. This is still doing big damage into the Amoogus. And this is what I was worried about, right? This is what makes me worried here is the fact that, yeah, this, this Palkia is just healing on up. I really can't kill it. I can't hit it all that much. But this is why I'm hitting the Amoogus because I do take damage here. Obviously, with the light screen, this isn't really too problematic for me because it's going to do like 90%, but actually did a lot less because they are not item boosting, they are no life orbs, so we just still, we just still, still does over 50%, and there's the geyser which is now in range of killing Amoongus, which I can't get a better turn for. Now, this is one of those ones where they should be protecting Amoongus, and I have to kind of call this. I have to geyser that slot anyways, because hitting the Palkia is useless. If they protect the Amoongus and I hit Palkia, they pull and puff up next turn, right? So, yes, I'm attacking into a protect, but there's no better place for me to do this. Right, I have zero, no better play. I should reflect here. Not sure if I did. I did. Perfect. Like I said, setting up for that Calyrex in the back, make, making sure I do not lose the end game here. And we're gonna get the big old Max Geyser here, just into the Moongus, just trying to do as much damage to it as possible. Falcon's gonna go Hydro Pump and is gonna double connect the Hydro Pump here, take out my game style. And like I said, that's why I wanted to get the reflect up. Get the end game up. I'm, I know I'm losing Grimstone all there. There's no real reason for me to do anything else. Uh, this is one of those matchups where having Spirit Break Grimstone, especially the way they're leading and the way they're playing, actually works. But I still do like foul play a little bit more. It still helps versus the Calyrex mode, right? Like the Palkia, I can stall it with the screens. It can't really hit me all that much. And we're kind of gaming. Right? I have Substitute. It can't kill me as long as we're in electric terrain. And with Light Screen up, it can't one shot my pieces. And when Palkia is not one-shotting things, it struggles a lot. He has so many status conditions under Not status conditions, but field condition. Up right now, it's wild. Um, this is one of those ones where Amoongus should switch out so they can, in the future, have it still. So I'm going to hard... I could hard switch an instant. I don't think I do. I think at this point, I should just go for damage. Update. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay, that's fine. I went for damage with Ogre and hard switch instant for Zacian, which I think is safe. Yes, it's potentially a throw. Of getting rid of my instant, but I also feel like there's potentially a max Wormwind if they want to max the Palkia right now. And Origin Pulse will just kill Amoongus or do big damage to anything that switches in. So they're actually gonna bring in instant, which I don't respect at all. I don't like that switch, right? Because in my opinion, that's a valuable piece that you can use later. You've now seen Substitute, Sacred Sword, and Behemoth Blade from my from my Zashian and Protect. You see my moveset. You know I don't have Clara right you don't have to be worried about it so 
bringing in your instant there to me just seems like it's over the overdone i feel like that's a misplay on their end which i actually think lets me back in the game because i've been saying this in the entire time right i max they have late game max and i really gain nothing from my damage right here there's a chance they click wormwind which is perfectly fine i would be expecting that it wouldn't be surprising right especially because i'm protected in this same position in pm1 right which maybe that's why they're bringing it in Right, it makes sense. They don't. They expect me just to intimidate, have fake up pressure on the board for the future turn. Right, but they are gonna guys. They're gonna drop my instant, and in turn, I'm gonna say no, no, no. Please don't drop my instant. I'm gonna drop yours, and this is why I think going for the opulse there. Did I actually water spell? I did water spell. Even better. Uh, that's why going for the water spell there is perfect. Get the instant off the field. I don't think it was a good play on their end. I do get a crit, but as you guys see, it, I don't think that matters at all. And now we have, I believe, one turn left to trick room. Zashian hits the field, and now we have the mind game, right? It is a mind game of does Zashian protect, and the answer here is I always attack with my Zashian in this position. Unless there's some sort of random position that they're in or random plays they've been making that, in, in, that entices me to not protect my Zashian, I am always attacking. To, to, to protect my Zashian, I'm always attacking here. This is the last turn of Trick Room. You know they're going to be coming in and bring, being aggressive with the uh, Calyrex. Yep. Like I said, last turn of Trick Room. This is where it, this is where it all comes down to. Right. This this is the turn. This is the game deciding turn. Right. If they attack into a protect, they lose, and they know that, so they have to chip the ogre. Right. If they stay in and attack and kill my Zashian, okay, go ahead and do that. I'm behind a light screen, so they have to double it to take a knockout. And that means I get free Water Spell or a free Behemoth Blade off. I'm getting one of these two off, and at that point, I should be safe to win the endgame. Because I'm doing massive damage to Calyrex to a spot where it's dead next turn if they don't target my Ogre. And if they're not targeting my Ogre, so if they do target my Ogre, I have Zashian. Right, so they're basically done here to Ogre in the endgame, even if they do get my Zashian here. Right, so there's really no reason for me to protect. If I protect, they hit Ogre, it's a little shaky still because they Worm win, right? Whereas in this case, like, okay, yeah, they double Zashi and they kill me. Water Spell comes out, I do over 50 to Kali, and then the following turn, I kill the Kali, and then the following turn, I kill the Amoongus, and Pelkian never is capable of taking me down. So they do actually go high horsepower into my uh, Kyogre there, but as we see, here's the speed tie that I was talking about earlier. So Kyogre actually went before that. Uh, the Wormwind does come out, does go into Ogre, Ogre behind screen. Absolutely broken, ladies and gentlemen. Absolutely broken. I love this Ogre behind screen. It just doesn't die. And because now we're sitting here, we actually given us, they've actually given us a Behemoth Blade as well. This is GG. Right? Protecting there, I mean, it doesn't hurt me. Protecting there doesn't hurt me, but that gives me the W. Right? Protecting there doesn't really cost me anything. That crit doesn't matter. It was to, it was dying. Yeah, they worm winded, but it was at 50%. There was no berry. So you're going to see the Calyrex go down there. The rain is going to stop, which is a little shaky. So I, they may have been able to survive and get another Trick Room up there. Had they killed Pelkia? Had they killed Zashian? Which is spooky, but I don't think they ever target the Zashian there because protect for my end is safe, right? Like, a move, like Kyogre's not dying, and Zashian should just protect, right? Like, I think protect is too obvious in that spot, especially the way they were playing. I don't know, I got the call right. Like I said, it's still a game deciding call that has to be made, and I got it right. That's all there is to it there. I mean, I've played this matchup enough to know, or to, to know the feeling of when they're going to attack into me there, so. We got it right, and that's the sit seal of the game. I believe I substitute here. Actually, do I just kill Amoogus? I just kill Amoogus because Zashian can't die, right? Ryan, kill Amoogus. Zashian won't die. Ryan, kill Amoogus. Uh, I think they actually make a really good play of protecting the Amoogus here. Which is actually really, really nice. So I could have been given a free substitute right there, right? Which would have been really nice, but there's nothing more I could have really done there. And like, if I sub, and the thing is, I didn't want to sub because they could potentially break my sub and then score me, and then I'm actually in a little bit of trouble because then Zach can just leave. Right? And I've gained nothing out of that. This way here, I wasn't dying, right? So I might as well take the Amoongus. And the good part about this is I'm still not dying, you know? Now, at this point, I simply double into the Amoongus and take it out since it can no longer protect. And Zashian isn't going to die to anything Palkia goes for. So we get the free KO on the Amoongus, and it's just GG. Uh, Kyogre also isn't going to die to anything that Palkia goes for, so... Like I said, this is Hyper Beam Behemoth Blade, take out the Gus, and GG.
Assuming Hyper Beam connects, that is. <laughs> Assuming the Hyper Beam connects. Amoogus is going to go for the double, which would have won them the game, by the way. I, I mean, maybe I could have played around that, but I don't think there was much really to do. I'm not going to play around a 30% chance if I have a 70% chance to win the other way. Blade, obviously not going to pick up the knockout. I could have O-Pulse here, so I didn't take a turn of rest, but I had to make sure this knockout was going to happen. Like I said, this is the Amoogus that doesn't die. I had to make sure I got it down. Right? In my opinion, it might be slightly overkill, but knowing that Kyogre is not going to die to an attack from this Palkia right now, is perfectly fine. They actually opt for a Trick Room as well, which I think is their best play, right? Double Protect, Trick Room, then they have Spore Pressure, and they actually probably win the game, right? So they thankfully did not get to Double Protect, so we take those, and now it's just Double Attack, right? They feel like they... I, this is one of those ones where they attack Palkia, expects it. They attack Kyogre, expecting Zacian to protect, to give myself an extra turn with Kyogre. So this is basically just free damage. I'm still not dying to anything from this... Uh, Palkia, so I'm still chilling, right? Station Ren goes into Kyogre, doesn't pick up the knockout. I do now have to recharge. Sacred Sword comes out. Gonna go into the Palkia, obviously doing nothing. But uh, now we just keep going and keep attacking this Palkia. Right? Eventually, Hyper Beam and Sacred Sword is going to take it out. They can't Oko Zashian here. So this is in range of Sacred Sword, Hyper Beam, and it's GG. Eventually, both of these attacks are going off. Hyper Beam, this is the Speed Tie coming in again. Me being slower now, which is really, really nice. Gets the, sacred, uh, gets the Hyper Beam off. Not going to kill the Palkia, and I believe they just Spatial Ren. It's like, it's actually spooky if I don't get, win that Speed Tie there. Because Kyogre does go down before the Hyper Beam. And then Sacred Sword comes up. So. Right, and then I'm Sacred Sorting. I don't know if I do enough damage at that point, but... It would have been close to see how much damage I do with Sacred Sword in that endgame, but that's one of those ones where the speed tie there really did kind of change, change the tie to things, but I don't think I played that set very, very well. I'm going to be honest. I have outs there that I just didn't take, right? And it's a position-based game. I relied on the positioning. I got the positioning for most of the game. Obviously, I messed up in game two. I should have been a whole lot more aggressive there. And in game three, even as well, I don't know if I really messed up per se, more so as if I just got a few reads wrong. I mean, I got most of them right. I got the important ones right, but I got some other ones wrong that would have really put me in the game a little bit, would have made that game a little bit easier in the end game. But uh, like I said, guys, in a set like that with this team, it's all position-based. It's just a matter of getting reads right in Trick Room and making sure you have your pieces out of room. I think the aggressive Max Lightning play is really, really good in game one as well. But the problem with revealing it in game one is in then you are relying, then what do you do game two? Right? For me, it's I want them to be bringing Amoongus and Palkia, right? Because Amoongus and Palkia, Amoongus, Palkia, Calyrex, Instant doesn't exert enough pressure to win games versus me in the long run, and I want them to bring that. So the moment I reveal Lightning in Game 1, they're not bringing it Game they, they might not bring Amoongus Game 2, right? They might make an adaptation. And I'd rather them not make the adaptation there, in my opinion. But in Game 2, there's no excuse for me to not go for Max Lightning and be Palkia there. There is no, re there is no excuse. It's, it's just... It's just, I have to get aggressive. You know what I mean? I have to get aggressive and I chose not to. But that's going to be it for this one, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I will catch you guys in a future video.